while life seems to become easier theoretically. In theory, when you analyze life today, we have such advanced modes of transport, such easy ways of communication. In theory, life seems easier than previous times, but practically life has become more challenging than the previous times. Tension, depression, and frustration has, wallah, become the order of the day. Happiness, joy, and prosperity is something of the past. I swear by Allah, the greatest contributing factor to depression is gula. Ask that young boy who after he takes a pill and he's on a bus and he's on cloud nine and he's safe, you know, floating somewhere else. As soon as he becomes sober, he goes through such depression that he's left with one of two options. Either he commits suicide or takes a pill again. There's no other choice in the life of that young boy. I personally have dealt with many youth involved in drugs. Perhaps while perpetrating the crime, he enjoys fake pleasure. But no sooner he becomes sober, he goes through such depression. My Nabi wasallam said in the hadith, prophesizing the things of Qiyamah, a man will come to the grave, to the grave of his brother, not to respect the disease, not to come and convey thawab to him. Yatamarragu. He will then turn in the soil of the grave and he will say, Ya laytani kuntu makana sahiba hadha al-qabl. My brother, I envy you, you are gone. I promise you, I cannot bear the calamities of this world any longer. I wish I was beneath the soil and you were above the soil. In the midst of all the comforts that he has, Ala mawtun yuba'u fa ashtarihi, fa hadha al-aishu ma la khayra fihi. Someone said, I wish. Can you tell me someone is selling death? I want to buy death. I'm frustrated with life. I have come here with all the comforts, all the luxuries, all the affluence. Now in a fit of frustration, you say, I wish I die. I wish I die. I wish I die. Take any youngster to a rehabilitation. When he's been admitted in that particular rehab, the first thing they ask him is the symptoms of drugs. Did the thought of suicide cross your mind? That's amongst the first things. This is nothing, these antidepressant tablets, you know, they have antidepressant. I give this example, perhaps I share it with you. It's nothing, that is escapism. You are hiding the reality. You are disguising and camouflaging. You are not solving, you are not soothing, you are not unwinding, you are not relaxing. It's like a person went to a particular motor mechanic, he had a problem in his car. Says, you know what, as I'm driving, there's this very strange and peculiar sound coming out, and I can't trace the problem. So the motor mechanic had a look at the car, uh, but he couldn't trace the problem. He says, you know what, I can't really find anything, but I got a way out. I can solve the problem for you. If it really bothers you while driving, just put your radio a bit louder. If the noise bothers you, just put your radio, and I promise you, your problem will be solved without any money. I won't take a cent from you. You just turn the volume a bit louder, and that's it. I swear by Allah, that is antidepressant tablets. You have solved no problem. You have only camouflaged it. You've disguised it. The problem remains. Become sober, and it's worse than what it was. That is antidepressant tablets. The riwayat of Bayhaqi, Nabi alayhi salam said, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah is the cure of 99 ailments, the least of which is depression. The least of which is depression. As I was mentioning, brothers, the greatest contributing factor to depression, Allah's qasam, is guna. There is nothing that will depress a man more than sin. Nabi alayhi salam says in the hadith, Inna sidqa tamanina. Listen to the words of Nabi alayhi salam. Honesty provides tranquility. Honesty in your dealings, in your interaction, provides divine happiness, joy, satisfaction. Now extend the realms of that hadith. Broaden the scope of that hadith. Let's extend the, extend the explanation. Explore that hadith. Honesty, piety, integrity, loyalty, fidelity provides divine happiness, joy, and satisfaction. And Nabi alayhi salam says lies, sin, vice provides rest Restlessness, uneasiness, depression, frustration. Ask a man pursuing an unlawful relation. My wife mustn't get hold of my phone. Whoever is at the door, run quickly. I better see who's coming. He's constantly he's, he's, he's on his nerves all the time. Nobody must come to know my wrong. The, 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 the depression that, he, that results out of that sin. The nature of the devil is, and, and this in particular I want to address to my youth. The Quran speaks about this here. That when the devil provokes a person towards a sin, and he paints the picture that you make zina and you will be happy. You take the spill and that will be the end of pain in your life. And you know, that is it. 
كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان كفر كمثل الشيطان إذ قال للإنسان كفر فلما كفر قال إني بريء منك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين فكان عاقبتهما أنهما في النار خالدين فيها وذلك جزاء الظالمين The similitude of the devil when he incites and provokes you to a sin Now when a devil provokes you to a sin then he plans the sin for you he also answers all the possible leak outs of the sin. That if you come late, what you'll tell your wife? No, no, you can tell her you got delayed at work. On the way, if this happened, all the apparent falls and loopholes, that perhaps could be a setback. The devil answers everything. Instantly, the mind is running. The mind is running. The devil is flowing. The sin is vivid before him. He's got a choice. Either he does it or not. It, it looks very tempting, very appealing, very convincing, very, you know, if I do it, this is, this is what I actually need in my life. It will be the end of this depression and tiredness and fatigue and whatever else as it is a beautiful massage you know by by gentle hands what more do i need so the devil provokes him up and the devil says do it and i'm with you all the way and look here after all when the brothers of yusuf intended killing yusuf and then immediately at that time and i'm going to tell you something very important listen to what i got to say brothers at that particular moment the devil told them what that you commit this act, you kill your brother out of jealousy. Out of jealousy, kill your brother, get rid of him. The focus of your father will then be exclusive on you. And after the sin, after all Allah is forgiving. If you won't commit sins, who will Allah forgive? Scholars explain to think of the mercy of Allah prior to committing a sin. To think of the mercy of Allah prior to committing a sin. Is like saying, burn yourself. I've got an ointment for burnt fingers, so burn yourself. I, I, I bought this ointment. If I'm not going to burn myself, who, who's going to use this ointment? So let me burn myself. Let me burn myself. I mean, I bought it here in case something happens, so let me burn. That is not the time to reflect on the mercy of Allah. Scholars explain if a person ponders over the mercy and the forgiveness, the kindness and the tolerance, the respite and the clemency of Allah, prior to perpetrating a sin, his minor sin will become a major sin. That is what will happen. Oh, my Allah is so forgiving. I don't need to just look at this woman. I can have zina with her. When my Allah can forgive so much, let me satisfy myself totally. That is not the time to look at how merciful Allah is. So the devil plans everything and he reminds you of how forgiving Allah is also. And he promises you do this. فَلَمَّا كَفَرْ When you make kufr, when you make zina, when you take that pill, and after you become sober, such depression engulfs your heart. What does the Quran say? وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا The support, the encouragement, the, 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 the person standing with you and provoking you with the devil. As soon as you perpetrate, he withdraws. The Quran says, خَنَّاس مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاس خَنَّاس Oh Allah, I seek your evil from the sneaking whisperer who comes, sneaks, withdraws, sneaks, withdraws. So after you've perpetrated the crime, he withdraws totally. I'm not with you. Now you do what you... Inni akhafullah, I got nothing to do with you. Now you, tough luck to you, my friend. You did it, you suffer it. The only way I can join you again is if you go back to that woman. If you take the pill again, I stand with you. Hence, you will see a person committed a crime to satisfy himself. One after the other. He goes deeper and deeper into that sin and there's no way he's coming back. Life looks so dark for him, there's no way out. In the battle of Badr, Shaitan came to Abu Sufyan in the form of Suraka as the leader of the tribe of Kinana and he told him, وَإِذَا زَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ وَعَمَالَهُمْ وَقَالَ لَا غَالِبَ لَكُمُ الْيَوْمَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَإِنِّي جَارٌ لَكُمْ I am with you. Don't worry, I will support you, I will encourage you, I will help you, you will defeat the Muslims. فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَتِ الْفِئَتَانِ But when reality stared and the two armies met with one another, نَكَسَ عَلَى عَقِبَيْهِ as is the nature of the devil, he withdraws and he fled the battle. So Abu Sufyan asked him, O oh Suraka, where are you? You promised me, you encouraged me, you motivated me. Qala inni, what did he say? Nakasa ala atibayhi. Wa qala inni bari'um minkum. Inni ara ma la taroon. Inni akhafullah. No, no, I can see divine angels coming. I've got nothing. You involved, you, you suffer the consequences. You know, they say in Arabic, Ahlu layli fi laylihim aladhu min ahli lahwi fi lahwihim. Allah's qasam, the joy that people derive in disturbing their sleep, in disturbing their sleep and making wuzu in cold water 
and enjoying the privilege of communicating with Allah in the dead of night is much greater and much more than that young boy who's sitting on the lap of a beautiful, seductive, strange woman in the heart of a club with a bottle of wine in his hand. My brother, you have tasted the fake pleasure. You've seen how it has deceived you. I call you in this gathering and I invite you and I implore you. I introduce you to divine pleasure. I introduce you to spiritual pleasure. Wallah, there is such pleasure in Salah. A time may Allah favor you with it, one and all. Where you will go in sajda, and I promise you, you will derive such pleasure. Allah's qasam in his control is my life. You won't able to lift your head up. I promise you, brothers, I can cheer and say it. There are those moments which Allah gives. Rajulun dhakar Allah khaliya. You know, one is you crave for a woman, you crave for a pill, you crave for a sin, and one is you crave for Allah. It's not even a correct term and phrase to use. You know, it, it has filthy connotations, crave. But you love Allah, and you sit in sajda, and, and you feel the presence of your Allah, and you feel that closeness to Allah, that you, Wallah, I swear by Allah, you can't lift your head up. You, you just cannot. It, it's like you, you're stuck. There's, there's something between you and your Creator. May Allah give it to you, say Ameen.